What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Today we are talking about estimating products of decimals. This is video two in our multiplying decimals playlist. We'll hope you'll check out the other ones as well. Let's dive right in. Today I will be able to estimate the products of decimals by rounding. So today we're going to be talking about multiplying decimals by decimals, decimals by whole numbers, but again, estimating those products. Check out our next video for actually solving them using the standard algorithm. First, we need to dive into some math vocabulary, so that way we have a uh, common understanding of what different words mean, so that when I say estimating, you understand what I mean when I say estimating, um, because everybody might have a little bit different definition, but when we're talking about estimating, we are talking about when you don't want to know the exact answer, you just want to know something that is about the right answer, right? And so when I think about um, estimating, I think about being at the beach because when you're at the beach, you don't need to know the exact time. You just need to know uh, it's about lunchtime, right? Or uh, it's about dinner time. So estimating again, when you don't want the exact answer, you just want something that is about right. And then also this word reasonableness is very, very important. We're not going to use it as much today as we will in later videos for this playlist, but I want to go ahead and share it with you because it is about estimating, and that is reasonableness, which is, does my answer make sense? So when you estimate an answer and you then you actually solve to get the exact answer, those answers should be relatively similar. And so if it's not, then you messed up somewhere because your answer should make sense, right? So if I said, man, I'm going to eat 100 cookies right now, that wouldn't be very reasonable. But if I was like, yeah, you know, it's after dinner. I'm going to eat two cookies. Well, that would be something that is reasonableness. So again, today we're going to be using estimating to check for reasonableness later in other videos. So our steps for estimating products are very similar to when we were estimating whole numbers. If we were multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting, the first one is you want to round each factor to a number you can multiply easily, right? Factor being the numbers you're multiplying together. And so when you estimate, you want to round to at least the ones place, but you want to round to something that you can easily do in your head um, if possible, because you don't want to spend a long time estimating when then, then actually have to go and solve the problem. And then number two, after you round those you are going to multiply your rounded numbers. And that's going to give you something that should be about the right answer. Now, I want to estimate 3 and 45 hundredths times 7 and 41,111 millionths, right? And so I want to know what, I don't want to know exactly C. I want to know something that is about C. And so when we, when we are estimating, you don't use an actual equal sign because it's not exactly equal. You use an estimating sign kind of looks like an ocean wave, which is why I think about beaches, right? So the first thing you want to do, you want to round each of these to the biggest place value, if you can, or at least the ones place. And so this is four or less, four or less, you're going to let it rest. So that's going to be three. And then again, this would be the ones place, four or less, you let it rest, that'd be seven. And so when you estimate these, obviously your answer would be 21. And so C should be about 21. So now when I go back and solve for C exactly, which you can check out uh, video four in our multiplying decimal playlist to really learn how to do that, my answer should be around 21. If I get 21,000, then I did something wrong. If I get 200,000, again, my answer can't be reasonable because my estimate was 21, right? If I get something around, you know, 19 and 7,400, well, then, yeah, that would be reasonable because they're pretty similar to each other, right? Um, now, if you really want to dive into this, you know that this number is bigger than 7 because it had a little bit of uh, little extra pieces, right? This number is bigger than 3 because, again, you had a few more pieces after 3. So when you multiply a number that's bigger than 7 and bigger than 3, your estimate should be bigger than 21, right? It could barely be bigger than 21, but it should be bigger than 21. So that's kind of a more advanced way of checking for reasonableness, right? Uh, let's go ahead and do one more. Go ahead and pause. Try to solve it. Remember this word about means you are estimating, right? And so this is a key word we always circle because we don't want to know exactly the right answer. We want it to know about the right answer. So hopefully you paused it, right? And hopefully when you're doing this, okay, I'm going to rewrite this. I want to know about 
what this answer should be. And so I'm going to put my equal sign here first. I'm going to round this one to the biggest hundreds place, hundreds place, which is going to be 200. And I'm going to round this to my biggest place value, my tens place, which is going to be 50. And now because I made it friendly numbers, I can very easily do this in my head. 2 times 10 is 10. And I'm going to use my powers of 10 um, to understand that I can add three more zeros right here. And so your answer won't be exactly, sorry, I shouldn't put that. Your answer should be about 10,000. Now, you rounded this number down, so you're taking groups away of 54. You rounded 54 down as well, which means your answer should be bigger than 10,000. Because when you estimated, you were taking groups away to round down. Now, if you put those groups back in, if you were solving it exactly, 10,000 would be the smallest it could possibly, possibly be. It should actually be big, bigger than 10,000. So that's another way to check for reasonableness. If you get 10,000, if you get a number smaller than 10,000, let's say you get 9,999, right? For this question, even though it's really close to your estimate, that would not be reasonable because we know that our number should be bigger than 10,000 because when we rounded, we rounded down, which is going to make our answer smaller, right? And so that's just a, a higher level thought process. Really, you could just use your estimate to check your answer. But as you get better and better at math, you want to start thinking about those things and realizing that your answer, your product, when you solve it exactly, should be bigger than 10,000. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you understand a little bit more about estimating. Please check out our other multiplying decimal playlist videos at our YouTube channel, Instructed Beats Official. We would love for you to subscribe. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Please check us out on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. Instructed Beats, out!